My thoughts on young people as a general rule, not just Sandan, is they often get a bad press because there's a, there's a, there's a minority who create a lot of noise because um, of their activities. And everybody says, oh, it's youngsters this, this day and age, you know, they're, they're all the same. But actually, I firmly believe it's, it's a minority. I don't feel safe, mainly because if something were to happen at night in Sandown, I don't feel that I would have anywhere safe to go apart from my own home or know anyone I could approach for help. I don't think there's enough light in the towns, especially at night. I mean, you know, as I say, I, walking, walking through the town at night, there's so many dark alleyways. I think it's the threat of other people, and it, regardless of whether it is or isn't, you still feel that threat. Perhaps there's some work that can be done with the police to identify why young people feel safe. Perhaps there's particular areas where improved lighting, things like that could help. The skate park isn't properly lit. Some of the lights don't work. Young people are having to use the light from their phones to see. It's an incredibly safe place to work, live and play. Um, it's easy to be drawn in to, to what you're aware of locally amongst your, amongst your friends, but when you compare it to other areas on the Isle of Wight and especially on the big island on the other side of the water, it's an exceptionally safe place to live. Again, I would hope it's safe to take part in nightly activities. My inference from the, the, the fact you guys have asked this question is you don't feel that necessarily particularly is. So I would be interested to hear um, what you think the issues are to see whether, again, whether it, it could be something the police are aware of but just haven't communicated to us. There is a problem. I did have an altercation with some uh, kids twice now, in fact, um, we're trying to break the lights at the railway station and when I approached them about stopping it they wouldn't back down they really wanted to fight these guys um, and I also had the same problem on the seafront when the people were breaking windows in the hotel that, and they wouldn't back down either they, they, they seem to be more up front for a fight now basically What's your opinion on people being allowed to carry knives? That's obviously a really tough question because then it comes to uh, the, the thing where if you take away um, knives, the people that were given the knives won't have knives to protect themselves from the people that don't have knives. Um, I don't think anyone should carry knives personally, but that just comes into the whole problem with people won't give in their knives, so then other people want to carry knives to protect themselves. I feel like it's incredibly bad that we live in a town where some people believe that they need to carry knives to protect themselves and I, I think we need to try everything in our ability to make it so they don't think they need to carry knives to protect themselves in this town. I'm very aware that some young people feel that carrying a knife for defensive reasons is the right thing to do. I've heard it said before, you've got to carry a knife because if you don't you'll get stabbed. The reality is, to stop people carrying knives, we all need to stop carrying knives. So the, the reasons I think are clear, because through fear we choose to arm ourselves, but the path to fixing that is to not carry knives. People carry knives for self-defence, to harm others or to scare people away. It seems these days many people carry knives. I, I understand why people do it, and you know, even in my days people used to you know, carry knives around the town, but I can't condone it because it's against the law. Simple as that, really, I'm afraid. So if you were to look at the, the number of hate crimes that have taken place across the island, and especially in the Bay, there is an increase in hate crime. And there is specifically an increase in disability-related hate crime. So it's, it's good research. Um, but it's very hard to tell because we're also making such a concerted effort to encourage the reporting of hate crime. Well, Sandown's not too bad. It's a little run down now. As you see by the hotel just behind us, it's been pulled down and it's thing. And there's a couple on the front that have hit a few bad patches that the council need to sort out. Once you've done the same things over and over again, it becomes boring. Even if you have been in, the, in a derelict building before, it can still feel adventurous and people are going into them daily. Uh, I think it could be boredom. Um, 
stupidity, because they're dangerous. It could just be um, opportunity. Someone could dare someone to go into the building and, and see what's inside. Or it could be that people just want somewhere safe, where they feel safe to go inside, out of the weather. You know, they may not have the best of home lives. So they want somewhere they can go and what they consider to be a safe environment. There was nothing to do and it felt cool to hang out with a group of new people. I didn't think my actions through, through until I saw the differences I was causing and I realised the impact it was having on my family. They were getting calls from the police about my antisocial behaviour. I didn't think too much about it until I stopped hanging around with that group. If you were in a group of people and one of them suggests you go into an abandoned building, everyone thinks that sounds cool and all of their thoughts are just focused on doing it and thinking it's a good idea until they get caught. One of them gets hurt. They don't realise until it happens to them. The reason I believe that people are entering these derelict buildings, um, especially young people, is that they're so accessible um, and it's so easy for them to gain access. There's very little obstruction or security around these buildings. Um, they effectively appear like parks and jungle gyms to young people. I have to confess, as a 13 to 16 year old myself, I'd have been just as tempted to enter those buildings with my friends. Do you think there's a problem with youth crime and sound down? Yes, yeah, but this is going back to them um, not having anything to do, you know. But if they had places to go and they didn't abuse these parts and these systems, then it'd be great for them and then the crime would go down. There are no places for children or young people to go. The places around Sandown don't have enough variety and people get easily bored at them. They're bored. so. I absolutely, I think there is a direct correlation. Whether or not it's youth clubs per se that we need, I'm not absolutely sure. And this is where the conversation comes in. Because I think different age groups need different provisions. The cost of living crisis is impacting families, parents, carers and their children are seeing and hearing about it. This can give them bad thoughts that they could become homeless and that their family isn't good enough. They can't get the things that they want or need and they get into a bad mindset. You know, a, a youth club uh, or some, some sporting sort of games clubs, you know, it used to be a table tennis club, it used to be a badminton club in Sandown, you know, where you can go and do things. It's all right in the summer, you can go and, you know, play battery gardens in the evening and stuff when it's light, but in the winter, you need some indoor venue to go to. Now we can go and just do something different in a safe environment. But then that really comes down to everything that's happening being publicised properly. I think that's, you know, it involves voluntary agencies working together. And there's some school involvement in this as well, because, you know, schools used to have after school and evening clubs. I walked around with youth workers and they asked what I thought of the area. They offered me lots of different activities to take part in and asked what activities would make Sandown a better place. I mentioned boxing as I was keen to try it. They started a boxing club and when I went along I really enjoyed it. Boxing made me forget about the group that was causing antisocial behaviour. It changed my mindset, who I was and what I was doing. Do I think that youth crime and youth antisocial behaviour is linked to the youth club closing? I think that certainly having a youth provision and a youth club in place would reduce crime and disorder in the Bay. Um, it'd be very difficult for me to say that it's a direct link to that particular youth club closing, but yes, do I, do I believe that having greater youth provision in the Bay would have a direct result on reducing crime? Yes, it would. And in fact, the, the, the work that we have seen from Community Action Isle of Wight demonstrates that, because every young person that we have referred to Community Action Isle of Wight has ceased to come to the notice of the police. What do you think about Sandown? I love the place. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, there is some downward looking places, but overall I love the place. I think the wildlife affects um, young people, and especially their mental health, in a really, really positive way. I mean, it, it's really lovely to be able to go out and walk and sing I mean, we are a biosphere and an area of outstanding natural beauty. We've got all these wonderful, you know, designations, and I think it's safe to say we do deserve them. I'd like to say, I'd like to say that young people will agree with that. And um, 
that can enjoy the beauty in the same way. I think it can be a very positive uh, thing, especially just going out there, breathing in the air, uh, very positive. And I think it's, uh, especially in Sandown, something young people do not take advantage of nearly enough, um, purely because I think a lot of the trails are quite hidden. Um, and I think they just don't know about them, and if they do, they just don't bother. And I think that's really sad because they're very beautiful places, and it w I, I think it's very helpful for young people's mental health to be out in nature. The beach cafes over the last 10 years have really improved proper coffee machines, outdoor, you know, catering for people, really making the most of what our best asset is, which is the bay. I think it's a good place to, uh, you know, um, on the summer, like, uh, you know, for water sports and stuff like that. Again, I love Boojum, it's a really nice pub. I love the vegan cafe up the top of the um, high street here. I think the local shops are really just, it's simply put, brilliant. I mean, the people that run them, naturally, I'm gonna say, are lovely. It's nice to be able to go in somewhere and instead of going and scanning something and going boop, um, buying something and having a conversation with someone. Businesses that have chosen to come and invest in Sundown, you know, whether it's the Premier Inn or it's the latest one is Viv's Kitchen on the high street. You know, these companies, these people have chosen to come and invest um, their time and effort because they obviously believe in Sandown as such. You have the wonderful sense of community as a, as a police service and as the sergeant for the area. When I reach out uh, and I ask my officers to reach out into our communities, into our schools, uh, into, our, into our youth groups, into our local businesses, people reach back. The best things about Sandown, I think, are the people who live here and the beach. It's a really friendly town. Um, people look out for each other and if you like the water, there's loads to do. There's not a better place on the island to live than the bay. We have got one of only about three um, stretches of golden sandy beach of that quality in the whole of Europe. I think the best part is the beach. Uh, the people are great. Everyone needs to work together, I think, to return Sand and Lake to its former glory. Nowhere's perfect, you know. Um, and you can, in my book, you can, either, you can either get on and help or you can, to some extent, go away. <laughs>